Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Will and Sweet live. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? My name is Anthony DJ. I'm a DJ. I'm cool. You're not. So shut up and listen. By the way, don't listen to me. I'm not giving any medical advice or legal advice. But today's show, you owe medical debt. Now what? <clears throat> so, you know, recently I was on one of these, uh, I belong to a bunch of uh, Facebook community pages. Um, like many people, I just want to see what's going on in my neighborhood, in my community, you know. So, <clears throat> Um, somebody posted anonymously on one of these Facebook groups. Oh, I owe medical debt. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm in over my head, blah, blah, blah. So I chimed in. Unfortunately, I have some experience with this. Um, you know, in my life, <clears throat> I grew up poor, not Calcutta, India poor, but as I like to say, American poor. Not to go into that, but uh, so, <clears throat> you know, there's been times in my life where I've had no medical insurance. Uh, there's been times in my life where I've had shitty or average medical insurance. And there's been times in my life where I had the best of the best of the best medical insurance. But even with the best medical insurance, depending on your deductible, you could be in a lot of problems if, you know, your medical bill is so high that because, you know, a deductible or whatever coverage is only a percentage, right? So if you owe 1% on a, you know, two brain operations, you, you, you know, unless you're a billionaire, you'll be broke. So <clears throat> I don't know all the details of this particular person's uh, um, medical debt problem. Uh, they only just said they were in debt and what can they do? Now, it's sad because in America, um, the number one reason for um, filing for bankruptcy is medical debt. It's not because people are lazy. It's not because they're drug addicts. It's not because they're poor. Uh, most people who get into medical debt or go homeless uh, and lose everything have jobs, three or four or five jobs, have even medical health insurance. Because remember, health insurance typically doesn't cover every single thing. So you're left with whatever it is, right? So again, if you have a big operation or a big procedure and it covers 99% of your procedure, but yeah, but your procedure was, you know, whatever, complicated brain surgery, you might be on the hook for who knows, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, and if you don't, how many people have that lying around? So anyways, um, what I told this person um, when I chimed in, I said, you know, the first thing you're going to do is, you know, anonymous person, the first thing you're going to do is you have to, and if you're listening to me and, and, and you're in this boat now and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of Americans have been or are in this boat actually. And it's sad because not to go down this rabbit hole, but you know, we're supposed to be the richest, most powerful, more, most richest, most smartest, richest, most powerful, powerful, so powerful country. Then how come we have millions and millions and millions of good, hardworking people filing for bankruptcies because of medical debt when other countries that are not so rich and powerful like us don't have that problem? Another issue, another another program. But anyways, so I told the person, look, here's what you're going to do. I type back on the on the, uh, the the thread on Facebook. Number one, you're going to be a big boy or big girl, and you're going to communicate. You're going to phone call, pick up the phone, and you're going to call either the hospital, the doctor's office. Obviously, you're not going to talk to the doctor, but you can call insurance. But I would also call the actual provider, the actual doctor's office or whatever, dentist's office itself. And you're going to ask them. You're going to tell them, there's a debt here. I don't have this type of money lying around. Could be a $500 bill. It could be $500 million, whatever. And obviously, if it's a million dollar bill, most Americans will never have a million dollars to pay. So, but you're going to communicate first and foremost. You're going to pick up the phone. You're going to call the people you owe money to. That is going to solve a lot of your problems because staying silent and shutting up, the, you're only going to make the problem worse. So you must communicate. Be a big boy, big girl. You're going to communicate. Shutting up and acting like it's not happening or trying to dodge it. No, no, no. You, you owe money morally you have to pay you have to pay something i'm not saying that you have to pay the whole thing because if you don't have the whole thing then you can't pay right but you have to make some kind of payment and this is where communication with the people you owe money to is going to help you so much so you're going to communicate this and obviously if you quote unquote can't pay like you you have no legs no arms you can't see you can't hear you you, you can't even add one plus one you're mentally you know, your brain's destroyed, then there's programs, you don't have to pay back anything anyways. But if you're a healthy person, you can walk and talk, you have to pay 
your debt back. Morally, you must. You, you can't walk away from that. That's not right. You owe money. Now, obviously, if it's such an absorbent amount of money that you're like, hey, I don't have 500000 I'll never have 500000 I'll never have a million. Understood. Again, that's what you're going to tell the medical people that you owe money to. And then they're going to do some kind of restructuring or, or work with you because you're showing your, that you're a big boy, you're a big girl, you're an adult. You're not hiding, you're not ignoring, you're not, you know, playing games. Get ahead of it. Pick up the phone. You also want to have a paper trail. So everyone, when you call somebody, you write down time, date, location, who you spoke to, and then you follow up with an email. You want an email trail. You want a quote unquote paper trail to prove. And, and even if you're just going to mail in a dollar a week, does it matter how much money you owe? Even if you just mail in a dollar, whatever it is, it shows goodwill, good effort. And you want to have track of that. Now that you may think that's funny. Oh, come on, a dollar. Again, if or maybe you have a hundred dollars, whatever it is, and you have money, don't tell me you don't. You got money for cake and coffee, you got money for Netflix, you got money for alcohol, you got money for vaping, you got money for how many pairs of shoes do you have? You got money for the latest iPhone, you got money for the big television you got, you got money to hang out with the boys, you got money to hang out with the girls, you may even go on vacation here and there, right? You got the money, okay? Stop. So, I'm not saying drain your whole account, but what I'm saying is goodwill payment show that you're trying on some level because most people that owe debt when they are in over their heads they don't even communicate and that's how things get bad if you're not going to reach out and constant reach out don't act like yeah i called them but they didn't call me back no 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 no. keep calling keep get communication get the name of the person you want to develop a relationship you owe money because if you don't pay it and you don't try you're going to be in worse trouble than you are now so again, I understand you might owe a lot of money that you'll never be able to pay. I'm not saying that you want to try to restructure that, of course, see if you can pay a lower amount. But you, the, the point here is goodwill, 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 showing that you're trying. Because if it goes to court, you have the paper trail now. You say, well, your honor, I paid this and that. And, and by the way, the hospitals and the, the debt collectors, they know that they have no case if you're making goodwill payments. So you're almost protecting yourself in that. So you want to pick up the phone and, and even call the debt company, whoever, right? Call them, make a relationship. You, you must. And that will solve all your problems, actually. Uh, now, I'm not saying that they're going to say to you, don't don't pay us anything. I'm not saying that. But it's going to solve all the stressors and it's going to solve this, you know, thing where like, I don't know what's happening. You're going to have a map and you're going to be able to, you know, pay some level of that debt back, if not the whole debt, depending on your situation. So that's what I would do. I would you have to. That's what I told this person. So, and I get it. It's embarrassing. Nobody wants to talk about their health situation and nobody wants to talk about their money situation. But humble yourself and you'll be exalted. Okay. Play games and run around and not return phone calls and not make an effort. You, you're going to get slammed and, and you're going to deserve it. So don't do that. Communicate. Even if they tell you stuff you don't want to hear, communicate. Communicate. Let them know. And then if they're like, no, you owe us $1,000, pay it now. You write a check for $10 or $100, whatever you can afford, you know what I mean? And just mail it in. Show, 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 show you're working. Show you're trying. And that will really solve a lot of the problems, if not all of them. That's the key right there. The other thing I would say is um, you want, so, you know, again, you're going to try to restructure that debt. But um, you want to see if you can pay cash, too. You know, many years ago, uh, long story short, I went to the hospital for an eye injury. I'm not going to get into the details why, but I went to the hospital for an eye injury. And long story short, I was there in the hospital for like 10 minutes. It was like $1,000. So I said to them, wow, okay, you know, whatever, a week or two later, I go into the bursar's office. I said, listen, I'm paying for this in cash. I didn't say, you know, I told them I'm paying in cash. So they told me, oh, okay, well, instead of $1,000, pay 90 That's what they told me. It was like $91, $92, 91 or $92. I was like, what? So if you can pay cash for certain things, I understand you can't pay cash for everything, but that's a 97% discount or ask campaign installments, you know, again, communicate, but if you can pay cash and if you know, you have a procedure coming up that could be relatively expensive or whatever expenses a relative term that you may have a hard time paying again, communicate that prior, Hey doc, or Hey, uh, healthcare or Hey office or wherever. Um, can I pay in installments or can we do better with this? I'm having an issue. I'm going to pay. Here's, here's my deposit, whatever it is. But again, when you communicate ahead of time, you, you build trust. And by the way, <clears throat> that shows in the future because <clears throat> 
medical problems don't happen once in life. They happen over and 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 over. So you want to show that, hey, you're doing well and you're trying because when the next problem happens, you don't have to be ashamed and duck and hide. You, you're going to be able to keep that doctor that you like or keep that office that you like. And people are going to work with you versus ducking and running uh, and acting like it's not happening. Yeah, everyone's going to have it out for you. And then you're not going to be able to see that one doctor that you like to see. You know, So you want to also get ahead of things if you know you have a, a planned operation or a planned dental thing happening or a planned whatever, uh, psychological visit, you know, whatever. So you want to get ahead of it and, and hey, look, your money's a little tight right now, but I do want to see you. Da, da, da. Communicate, communicate, communicate. It's in private. You don't have to go on stage with a microphone. So see also cash options. Is, is, you'll be surprised. Like I said, it worked for me and I, and I live in the New York City area. It wasn't some hick hospital with a doctor has one tooth in his head. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, you, you know, if you're in the debt up to your eyeballs or whatever, it's mounting and you're having a hard time paying, I would say contact your local, if you are part of a church or a synagogue or a mosque or a temple, ask your pastor or imam or priest or rabbi, hey, is there a program or something? You know, I'm not saying ask them for money, but, you know, maybe they'd be able to point you in the right direction. Call your mayor and council, email them, call your local, um, you know, uh, in, in your towns, they have the, uh, the town clerk, go online, find their number, ask them, are there any programs? Is that Write your senator. That's what they do. That's, that's their job to help you. And, you know, I understand that all of them are going to answer you back. Or most of them aren't going to be able to help you, but some will. Some will be able to point you in the right direction. I'm not saying they're going to give you money, but they'll say, oh, there's a program that you can sign up for this. Do it. Do it. Learn to advocate for yourself. Don't sit there like, oh, my God, I'm a victim. Cut that out. You have to fight for yourself, especially if you can. If you're if you're able to walk and talk and move, you have to. You have to pay this debt, either all of it or some restructured portion of it. You can't wash your hands from it. That's not right either. Um, and I get it. You know, shame on these uh, hospitals and, and health care plans and everyone's robbing everybody. I totally get that. And I agree. Believe me, I'm a human. I, I, like I told you, I grew up poor and I've had the best of insurances. I've had no insurance. I've had average insurance in my life. So I get it, you know, but communication is important. Uh, and that is really the gist of this whole episode is that. And so you're reaching out to, you know, again, community leaders or your house of worship or your mayors or council, your senators, your governors, whatever, local library might be able to give you some information uh, and you might qualify for some plans to help you out or, 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 you know, some money to help you out. But communication is the key. You have to get ahead of it, pick up the phone and don't act like, yeah, I called them. They never call me back. I right. keep calling, keep emailing. You must make a connection, find out the person's name, have that connection and that relationship. And that will help you out greatly, if not cure everything. I'm not saying it's going to cure everything overnight, but that's how you get out of or manage or mitigate uh, your medical debt. You know, and again, it's serious because that's the number one reason why most people file for chapter 11 and, and lose everything. And there's no need for you to lose everything. You know, we, uh, our country that if you're willing to step up and take some initiative, institutions will help you. People will help you because even institutions, hospitals and the debt collector, those are human beings. They're not just brick walls. So take it from me. That's what you'll do if you're into, you know, whatever, some uncomfortable debt or big debt or small debt or huge debt, whatever. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And if they say, oh, well, no, you still owe us. But again, you're going to always mail in every week or every month. A, whatever you can, 30 bucks, $10, a dollar, you're going to have a proof of money trail, email trail. I'm still hoping we can work something out. You want to keep that. You want to keep record of that because if something does go to court, you're going to wind up being in a great position because you're going to say, your honor, look, I, here's the proof. <laughs> I, I never stopped communicating and never stopped sending in money. And that that's going to be in your favor. Um, so you need to do that. And also proof that you can show the doctor's office, call your doctor's office, speak with the, the manager there, or maybe even the doctor. Hey, doc, look, this is the situation. I love you. You're great. Uh, you know, I, I only make this much a year or I only have this much. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pay you. I'm not looking to run away. And people love that. They appreciate the honesty and being an adult. Don't duck and run. I understand you're embarrassed. I get embarrassed. We all get embarrassed. Be an adult. So things will be better for you. The future is going to be bright for you. Just keep communicating and things will work out. Okay. I want the best for you. You deserve the best. The best is yet to come. I'm out of here. Five, four, three, two, one. I said bye. Bye.